Today we're taking a look at the Patry, a super battleship from the French line. Of course, this ship is being provided by Wargaming on my CC account. I actually don't have this ship myself yet, but boy do I plan on getting it as soon as I can, because this thing has been absolutely amazing today. I played five or six games and they all mostly went really well. There's a couple that went pretty poorly, but I think that was down to my poor positioning and just getting used to some of the weaknesses of this ship. But uh, considering this was my first game and my first couple of salvos here, yeah, I, uh, I was off to a great start, let's just say that. <laughs> Look at the uh, monstrous range that this ship has. Of course, it's a Republic with 12 guns, right? No gimmicks here outside of that. And what more could you really want outside of a Republic with more firepower? <laughs> You're going to lose some of the reload, unfortunately, that makes the Republic so amazing. But this ship feels a little more like a super Alsace or kind of a super Borgon. Of course, we don't have the reload booster here, but I think giving this ship a reload booster would make it absolutely too strong because this ship has been performing excellently for me. And, well, yeah, that's that's 120,000 damage in the first three minutes of a match. <laughs> and we absolutely crushed that carrier. And moving on later into this game, yeah, broadside Neptune, even with front guns, of course, you got eight guns up there. It's basically Republic bow in, and yeah, he goes down very quickly. Something the Petri was going to be known for, I guess, was the secondaries. Here I'm playing a bit of a hybrid build to start with. I moved away from that, as we'll talk about in a bit, but yeah, they absolutely murdered that Yamagiri. <laughs> Unfortunately, we trade, but the game is done at this point. We get 257k out of this game, and I, even though this was a pretty good result, I would say above my average with this ship so far, yeah, we lost 50,000 credits. So keep in mind that with this ship and really all super ships, you're going to be losing credits very, very quickly. These ships are incredibly expensive to get and even to play them is extremely expensive. I'm not running any of the special economic upgrades though that have been added last patch just the normal premium that is on this account. And yeah, it loses credits, but it's so powerful that I think you kind of have to limit the amount of playtime people can have in some of these super ships because it's just simply ridiculous. This ship has so much range and I felt it to be really usable range. Satsuma also has an insane amount of range, but it doesn't feel quite as usable to me. There's just something about the speed of these shells Right, 11k onto a rune at, what, 26 kilometers away? <laughs> it feels really, really, really comfortable to use this ship. The shell velocity, the dispersion is worse than a Republic, unfortunately, alongside of that reload, but more often than not, it's gonna be working. <laughs> I mean, I'm cherry picking some of these uh, shell shots for you guys, but I gotta say, I think I'm averaging a little over 200,000 so far in the first five or six games. Uh, we'll, we'll sh talk about that at the end, but it's amazing. Unfortunately, though, as we all know, these ships are going to be in early access. So you can't get your hands on these right away as soon as the next update drops. These are going to be in auction for early access. So given that these are going to be for credit auctions, I believe that, well, we got a massive dump of new credits into the system. These are gonna be way overinflated. So you're gonna to have to probably spend several hundred million credits to even potentially get the Petri or the Edgar. And I think that you probably should wait, honestly. <laughs> this is something that you're gonna get available in another two patches. I believe 11.9 is the patch that these are gonna be available the normal way where you can use your XP and credits, grind it up on the Republic, and then you can get this ship the standard super ship way. And it's not like this ship is all perfect, right? This ship has great guns, it has decent maneuverability, but I did get trolled here and there by those guns. And unfortunately, it is still a battleship, so it's not the Republic plus even more shell velocity, shell weight, I should say, salvo weight. It does have some pretty poor dispersion at times, and this Donskoy is pretty much the perfect example of that. 
Um, their Hindenburg, probably we misaimed a little bit, but uh, yeah, cruisers going flat broadside and taking not very much damage. Overpens mostly can happen. Not all the time. It is relatively consistent, especially compared to some of the smaller gun count ships, right? Six gun battleships. I think we all know at this point how much I hate those. <laughs> Having 12 guns is very nice, but that doesn't make up for some of the extremely poor dispersion this ship gets. That said though, I still had like 200K this game and only my worst game, I think I had 120,000 and that's still a pretty decent result. The other major weakness that I should mention about this ship is the armor. Overmatching this ship is extremely easy. 32 millimeters of armor basically everywhere and it's huge. This ship is gigantic. So those Yamatos, those Satsumas that are gonna be just chunking you for 10, 20K salvos, it hurts a lot. It really, really does. And even though this ship does have quite a bit of HP, 108k, it goes by pretty quickly when you've got several overmatching ships shooting at you all at once. I think that playing this ship really comes down to your ability to find those broadsides, since it's Republic guns. Every other super battleship so far has been above 460 millimeters, meaning they just overmatch 32 millimeters all the time, whereas this thing doesn't. So. It can feel a little bit weak against bow on battleships, even some of the lower tier ones, tier eight, tier nine, tier 10, of course, they're all getting that 32 mil plating, meaning they can angle to you, which is something none of the other super battleships have to worry about. So swapping to the HE can be a viable strategy. Here, it does decent damage, decent fire chance, but I really do wanna focus on the armor piercing. That's really the bread and butter of the Petri and Honestly, the Republic as well. It's not like a Conqueror or a Thunderer where the HE is that over the top that I want to be using it most of the time. It's a tool to be used at the right times, but flanking is really going to be the best thing you can do in the Patri, getting those cross map shots, because I think this ship is entirely usable out to 26 kilometers of range. I've been more than capable of hitting a lot of ships and at those ranges, people don't expect it. They really just don't. So. Catching people off guard isn't terribly difficult to do at those ranges. The other thing this ship can do extremely well is apply pressure in the early game. Since anybody going broadside, anybody pushing in, they're probably gonna take a massive hit from this thing. And as we produce better angles for our teammates to shoot at, well, this Hanover, as you can see, is pushing into the middle. We're gonna have to keep an eye on him for later, but as we get wider, we're creating and building more of a crossfire. And that's always the strength of battleships that don't have as much overmatch. You need to build those crossfires. And we're gonna try and do that here. But you're noticing I'm playing relatively passive still. I don't wanna push up too aggressively since no hydros here. We don't have tools to deal with destroyers very well. Even though the damage output can be really good against them, we can't spot them, right? We're not dealing with the torpedoes extremely well either. So. A little bit rough when your destroyer, your friendly DD, is playing five kilometers away from you <laughs> as you're kiting to the back of the map. Uh, sometimes this map feels a little claustrophobic, I would say, given that it's a much smaller map than originally designed. As you can see, all the corners have basically been chopped off of it. I'm really trying to get an angle here onto the Condi. I really want to finish him off, but it's tough because we do have people pushing into the middle and I think there's even a destroyer pushing through mid, so our Nakamov is gonna be in a bit of trouble. This ship, of course, while it doesn't have the biggest guns, Republic is no slouch in terms of pens, so a broadside Musashi, even at these ranges, no problem, 40k damage. <laughs> so I had a pretty good time with this ship. It didn't come without its frustrations, and that's pretty standard for a battleship, but I think this ship is going to be one of my favorite super ships in the entire game. And a lot of that does come down to it not having a gimmick, really. I think that a lot of these super ships shouldn't have some of these reload booster gimmicky special salvo type things. I think that making them into competent tier 11 style ships is much more interesting. It results in a very relatively consistent battleship in the Patri here. And it means that it doesn't feel quite as uh, unfair to fight against, I would say. I haven't fought many Patries yet, but 
I have to imagine that given this ship has a standard reload where it's not going to be boosting that reload to insane levels every once in a while, it's not boosting its dispersion every once in a while to crazy dispersion levels, it seems a little bit more like a known quantity, and you can fight against it knowing what this ship is good at and what it is also weak at. And it's by no means a weak super ship. I just really do like the design of something that doesn't have to rely so hard on a gimmick, and it's maybe a little better jack of all trades, something that's better in more scenarios than just trying to make use of that special gimmick. But let me know what you think in the comments down below on this one. I'd love to hear your perspective on super ships. I think that they could be cool additions to the game, um, but I would definitely prefer future super ships to not have the, well, over the top mechanics like a Condi has or Annapolis or the Satsuma, for example. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why this is a full game I'm showing you and not just like the clips earlier on. Well, this was my actual best game in the Patri I played so far today. Again, only five or six games, so not a huge sample size, but uh, this one was pretty awesome. We played from the very corner of the map, kind of pigeonholed in here by a lot of torpedoes. The Awami, of course, has 20 kilometer torps, and the enemy Oster is pretty dangerous when it comes to its torpedo DPM. It's constantly flooding torps out, and it's really easy to get caught off guard by those European DDs. I don't think that they have the best torps, but they sure know how to land a lot of them. And there we go. We finally are making use of our positioning and absolutely smash that hand over. <laughs> no citadels, but you can see how much full pens are really capable of. I don't really want to be playing this ship in a bow in kind of style like I am right here. I really do want to be playing it like a Borgone, like a kiting kind of ship. It's it's the same kind of play style as a Borgone, as an Alsace, I think, where you want to be making sure you get through all of your guns. You don't want to just be relying on bow on fights. Um, unfortunately for us, that Condi plays that very, very smart. I should point that out. I was aiming because I assumed he would turn to try and maneuver himself around that island rather than getting himself grounded on that island. He made the smart call and avoided my salvo through grounding. But now we know he's going to accelerate out of there, so I aim way ahead of him. This is something you kinda gotta get used to at these longer ranges, is leading targets, predicting what people are gonna do 10 seconds ahead of time. And we almost, almost led him perfectly to get a good salvo. You can see how close this game is still, relatively even on ships, even up on caps. We already have 200k into this game. And I'm kind of pushing alone here. Like I said, this is not really where I want to be, but these European destroyers reload their torps so quickly that I don't really trust my ability to get out of this situation without taking a massive salvo of torpedoes. Here's another one. Uh, we're gonna flood on this one. Looking back on it, I probably could have turned out at this point since he used both of his torpedoes. I think I would be able to turn out in time, but I decided to stay a little more bow in and try and hold this flank. You can see that my team is definitely winning the north, but the, we have lost a lot of control on the middle of the map. So as I'm pushing or holding onto this flank, we're creating a massive crossfire. Look at this poor Condi. He's focusing on our team in the north, and he's getting shot at by me in the south. This is a really good position, assuming I don't get flooded out by all these incoming torpedoes. The next thing I want to talk about a little bit when it comes to playing some of these battleships with longer reloads, right? In a Republic, you can almost fire on cooldown, and there's really not many consequences of it. But as soon as you start to get a 25, 26 second reload, as soon as you shoot, a lot of cruisers are capable of turning out in that amount of time you have to reload, where a Republic doesn't. I'm not shooting here because I know the Condi wants to get behind Island and into the cover there, so I wait until he's committing to his turn, and we get a decent salvo. There's a little more patience required with the Patri in comparison to the Borgone or the Republic. It's a little bit more difficult to play since you don't have that flexibility of that amazing reload, or at least the reload booster on the Borgone. I think there's probably going to be some of you that wish there was a reload booster here, but I gotta say, after playing this ship, I don't think they could realistically give it a reload booster. It's, uh, it'd be fun for the person playing this ship, and that's about it. <laughs> 
I'm not sure how I am unable to do damage to this Owami also. That was a little frustrating in the moment on this game, but that ship somehow managed to have some armor against me. But that might be down to the poor dispersion on the Patri. The worst Sigma compared to the Republic, at least. Of course, we do have 30 millimeters of overmatch, so anytime there's a cruiser like this, we feel reasonably confident in our ability to take him out. Unfortunately, Dispersion said no again, but we're still up to 245k damage, which is really, really, really good so far. So I'm not complaining too much, but it is noticeable that the Dispersion is sometimes bad. And if you have a really bad string of Dispersion, well, you can have some pretty rough experiences in this game. And that's, well, one of the reasons I quit streaming today. <laughs> I had a bit of a rough game as my final game in this ship. So it's not like I think this ship is broken, perfectly accurate. It has its moments where it doesn't shine, but I had to show this amazing result to you guys. I think that you probably, like I said, you probably should wait on the auction. I wouldn't spend all my credits on getting this ship or the Edgar. Wait two patches and then you'll be able to get this ship the normal way. They're still not cheap, keep in mind, right? They're going to be, what, 50, 60 million credits to purchase anyway. Uh, but at least you're not going to be spending hundreds of millions of credits. Like I said, with this economic change, remember guys, I made myself 200 million credits just by selling most of my camos. There's going to be people with way more credits than that. So I don't think really investing hard in this auction is going to be the best result to get these ships. I know you probably want it, but trust me, waiting two patches is going to work out so much better. Finally, the Awami does give me a nice flat broadside and dispersion seems to be cooperating. So 270k so far, yep, 307,000 damage in the first day of me playing this ship. 300k games don't happen all the time, but when they do, they're always very exciting. Of course, in super ship games, there is more HP than what a normal tier 10 game would show, but I'm pretty happy with that result, and I think Petri is going to be an excellent, excellent super battleship for the French line. Maybe even worth grinding up the entire French line just to get this super battleship. I think it's going to be more consistent and more fun than the Satsuma or the Hanover, at least for the super battleships. There's some pretty nice super cruisers, though, in terms of their consistency, but as far as battleships, I think this is going to be the new best super battleship. And finally, on a 300,000 damage game, yes, I managed to break even on credits. <laughs> a whole 15,000. As for the build, I actually ended up settling on a typical tank battleship build. I tried the secondary thing, and it kind of worked against that Yamagiri in that first game, but I found myself playing so far back most of the time, since super ship games are just so passive. Lots of carriers in queue as well, forcing me to play really far back. I just dropped it. I just went for a standard build, keeping gun feeder to possibly switch over to the HE, and of course, grease the gears was very useful. Something to note about the secondaries, while they do have an amazing hitting DPM, they're very similar to Iwami levels, not quite at Schlieffen, but it's some of the best in the game as far as hitting DPM. They're only 100 millimeter secondaries for the ma vast majority of them. So 17 mil pen means we're not even able to pen superstructures or destroyers. So you have to use IFHE. That's why I was able to pen that Yamagiri. I was using IFHE, which then hurts your fire chance on your main guns, which is 48 base. But as soon as you cut that down to 24, the HE becomes less usable. So that's kind of why I went for a standard build and things worked pretty well for me, I would say. As far as upgrades, again, it's basically the same as Borgone or Republic. Pretty standard, I would say. Of course, we're trying to make use of this nice engine boost, 15%, keep in mind. It, uh, it has a pretty big impact on the ship's maneuverability and its ability to dodge or even reposition around the map. It's pretty important to do that since, again, 431 millimeter guns. No 32 millimeters of overmatch here, but it does do some pretty solid damage. I do think Petri is pretty amazing and a ton of fun. I had I really enjoyed playing it today so far. I just think that it's unfortunate it's in an early access auction. I would definitely recommend waiting for it to come into the normal game since again, 
people are so flush with credits from selling all those camels they didn't need anymore that it's going to be way inflated. 300,000 or 300 million credits, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what these ships went for. So let me know what you think of the new Petri and maybe of the Edgar as well. Make a little video on that coming up as well. Um, more super ships. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't make the game too passive. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.